Welcome to the Merns History Group video channel. Now, just where is Merns? Well, Newton Merns, to give it its full name, is a suburban area seven miles south of Glasgow. At one time, not all that long ago, it was just a quiet rural village. Housing development started in the 1950s and have continued to do so ever since, changing the face of the area forever. In our videos, we hope to show you something of what life used to be like in Newton Merns. I think everyone will know this area, the Avenue Car Park. Back in 1932, the Western SMT Bus Company built a labs depot where the car park now stands. Buses from here served a large area and gave employment to many people, as well as providing a first-class bus service. The statistics surrounding the depot are impressive. In 1958, for example, 99 buses were based there and carried an average of 350,000 passengers in a week. 155 drivers, 180 conductors, 58 maintenance staff and 13 office staff worked there. An even earlier bus service, which was to have an interesting connection with the Western SMT, was started in the 1920s by a barhead footerer, Mr O'Hara. He formed the Southern Bus Company and ran two buses between Newton Merns and Glasgow, with a service to air in the summer months. One of his drivers, Johnny Bell, would later become manager of the Merns Western SMT depot. In 1930, the Southern Bus Company merged with the Midland Bus Services, run by Mr J.C. Sword. But that's not the end of the story, it's really the beginning of the Western SMT. One Merns resident, as well as being a regular passenger on the buses, has developed a keen interest over the years in the history of bus transport in Scotland, and takes up the story from here. It started off really as a uh, response to the 1930 Traffic Act when uh, the existing bus companies were given precedence over pirates, if you like, in getting regulated services going. Uh, the constituents of Western SMT, which were um, Scottish General Transport and JC Swords Midland Transport, uh, were already operating in this area in services, you know, generally to the south of Glasgow. And uh, they formed the company Western SMT and decided that it would be uh, a good thing to have a depot at the centre of their operations. And 1932 was the, the date when they started building the, the Western SMT depot at Newton Mearns. This was to uh, run the services uh, from Glasgow to Eagleson, Glasgow to Mearns Kirk, Glasgow to Mearns and Ayr and Stranraer, uh, Glasgow to Neilston and Bar um, uh, Barhead to Paisley. These were the, the main services that were uh, centred at uh, the, the depot Newton Mearns originally. Later were added in uh, other services like the Winter Drossen. Uh, via Paisley and uh, Air via Troon, also via Paisley, Beath and, and that sort of area. So the Merns depot became uh, one of the main uh, depots for the uh, sort of trunk services, the, the longer distance services. And uh, it built up from a, a fairly modest start to um, one of the uh, larger depots um, uh, operating for Western SMT. And then, of course, when uh, nationalisation came and so on, it, it, um, uh, the company spread its tentacles out a bit and um, uh, Newton Merns didn't uh, feature just quite so highly on the list. I come out of the army in uh, June, June 1946, and I started on the, the buses in Glasgow Fair Saturday in July, 
Johnny Johnny Bell caught it at the corner. He just hit me, just hit me and leave. I no what you? I says, give a chance. I says, I'm only hit me. I'm, I'm still on my, you know, you get about eight weeks leave. I'll send you to come out for a test. And then I went to, I sent him to come out for a, you know, for a PSV test. Come back out and start in Glasgow Fair Monday, in nine, July 1946. And that was me about, I had about 15, 16 years. I was a conductress on the Newton Merns Road from Waterloo Street out to Newton Merns. And a couple of times, a couple of the runs were out to Merns Kirk. And we just passed the hospital. I was there for 13 years, 1947 to 1960. I was a bus driver in the Western SMT, which was, uh, it was quite a, a responsible job in the days right enough, you know, because you had, you're driving buses there, old buses that didn't have a modern braking system, it's rod brakes, cable brakes and what have you. And of course, we had the busy times. Going into Glasgow at 25 past eight from Mernskirk, going right in, and most times we were full, just not far down from Merns, and that was us in right into Glasgow without stopping to pick up anywhere. One in one in ten was happening an hour, an hour, and after six, after you done a year, you got another happening. One in the lumps an hour. One in the lumps an hour it was. After that was that, that was you a driver then. It was the first time my mother had ever handled a five pound note when I went onto the buses. That was 1947. But it would be about that time, you know, that uh, I would get a five pound note in my wages. And you'd they drive. <coughs> you couldn't, but you see some of them nowadays. When they take off, the passengers get thrown back and they're going to break. In the days you'd be. Careful. If you start at stopping too quick, or you could be in trouble. If Johnny Bell caught you with a, you had to walk out in the street, you had to have years and years, years, years of hat on. Oh, you, you know I mean? So what, what I had done, my dad never wore a hat. Well, I had to wear a hat. Well, I bought more was in the army, but I never, I never used, as a boy, I never used him. I had a, a head of curl. When you're walking out in the street or walking up the garage, Jerry would go, where's your bonnet? You get your bonnet on. I did a lot of knitting. You know, sit at the back knitting, whatever I was doing. And there was one time one of the inspectors came on. Now, it was very early in the morning. I think that was the air run I was on. It was my rest day and I was out working. And of course, this inspector came on and I just reached round, handed him a wee bill, and he said, you usually stand up when the inspector comes on. I always did before, but... Uh, I just said, we were so sleepy. And of course, I just threw my knitting in the back. <laughs> so they didn't see it. Because <laughs> they're inspectors all over the place in the days. You never knew the minute when an inspector would crop up, jump on the bus, check things, and check your time. Fearless Freggy, oh, he was a hell of a man. When he was a conductor, he was known to, to uh, run down the stairs in the bus, right? When he as I say, he started as a conductor, uh, and uh, he was up the stair lifting fares, and he was known the fearless Freddy. He ran down the stairs, swung on the pole, and swung out and swung back in. You know, there was a pole in the centre of the platform. He ran down the stairs, swung on the pole, and swung back in again. And there were the passengers and statues. And that was fearless Freddy. And then he got into the driving. He was my hero as a, a schoolboy. He had a style of driving all his own and I used to come out in the evenings to get a run in his bus and uh, we'd come up to the, the Merns and he had a cup of tea at the end of almost every run. Freddie Wallet was my driver. I was on with all these years and uh, he was very funny, you know, he was always jokey. Freddie always wanted his tea. I've, nearly every run we had our tea. I was always running with a teapot. And uh, of course, if somebody came on, maybe we were running a wee bit late, about five, ten minutes, and they'd come on, they said they wanted to get a train in the central at a certain time. And it was maybe about a quarter an hour after, so they say, come on. So I just used to go up to the window, knock the window and just go my hands for Freddie to hurry up. And they always got their train. It's quite a <coughs> variety of routes, I mean, you do. Do a drossing, air via train. 
Merton's got me a class and Merton's got me a gift not. And you, your dad will, your heir, and uh, you'd quite uh, an eagle from it. It's quite a variety of routes to travel, you know. So when I started uh, Glasgow to Newton Mearns, Mearns was stage 10, and the fare was £10 return. The Broome Estate was stage 9, it was £9 return, and White Craig's was 8, and it was £8 return. And they bought a five, a five shilling, a five shilling weekly ticket. That was for a week. The buses at the Western SMT there were washed every night, inside and outside. There was no messing about there. I mean, everything was, and Johnny Bell was the manager and he seen that everything was done to scratch, you know. Johnny Bell took personal interest in the state of his fleet. There's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he just wouldn't let a, a, a bus go out that wasn't fit for the job. The least scratch the boss would see it. When he came down in the morning, he went round to all the buses to see if they were clean and see if there was any scratches. And if it was about an inch of scratch, he would find it. He would have the uh, maintenance staff repair it. It was a very, very well-run operation, with, operating very high standards. But in the Merns here, he had a seven-minute service because he had the air buses coming for air, and they were every uh, uh, they were every twenty minutes. So between the Merns bus, there was the Merns bus left at eleven o'clock. The next one was quarter past, but he had mere bus in between now. So they say like, like seven minutes past, and then you had the ne next air bus at twenty-seven, and then the next Merns bus at thirty. So you roughly a roughly a seven minute service, Glasgow to Merns. Tenton's return. Tenton's return to, to what I lose say. In 1968, the development of the new shopping centre was imminent. The ground where the bus depot stood was required for a new use, so Western SMT moved their operation to Thornley Bank. For more information about Newton Merns, visit the website at mernshistory.org.uk. If you've enjoyed this programme, please click the thumbs up button, and if you can, leave a comment. Thanks, and keep watching this channel for more content from Mern's History Group.